do you remember having an attention span? It doesn't seem like very long ago that I was sitting at my CompuServe desk doing some research for a term paper of some sort and just waiting and waiting and waiting some more for that one page to load. One image at a time. Ugh. <laughs> now, forget about it. Every single minute, I have about 15 browsers open, five different projects going at the same time, and that doesn't even include those crazy cat videos. <laughs> And all the while, my watch is counting my calories, my connected thermostat is keeping my house nice and cozy, and my fridge will probably tell me it's time to buy milk soon. So no, I do not have time to wait for that page to load. Man, what is wrong with this site? Refresh. Refresh. <laughs> Our connected designs don't have time to wait either. In the extreme immediacy of our completely connected IoT world, we need a robust design solution that will be able to deliver vast amounts of information with low latency and also be flexible and power efficient. And it would be really great if that solution was future proof, helping us anticipate what we're going to need tomorrow and the day after that and the next decade after that. That would be nice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Yes, we are talking about field programmable gate arrays this week, my friends. Their performance, their flexibility, and how you can take advantage of them in your next design. Maybe you thought you needed to be an expert to use FPGAs. Well, Tom Schulte from Intel is here to prove you wrong and to explain how FPGAs are going to take over the world. Or... Something pretty close to that. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about this topic from Intel. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Okay, so we're here to talk about programmability. But I see that Intel logo there. So, Tom, how does programmable solutions fit into the whole Intel ecosystem? As everyone knows, the world is becoming smarter, more connected. There's vast network of devices. There's the systems that are intimately linked to data centers and clouds. Also, the Internet of Things is continuing to grow. There's lots of machines out there that are generating lots of data. We're pretty soon going to have fully autonomous cars. So lots of data and electronic systems, whether they're in the data center or in businesses or at the edge of the network, they need to talk to each other. Sure. And Programmable Solutions is about anticipating those needs to help and accelerate those smart and connected electronic worlds. It seems like programmable solutions would have a lot of different kinds of markets today. Are you seeing that? Absolutely. So if you take a look at it, that FPGA interconnection, that data that needs to go back and forth between where it's being generated and where it's being processed to give insights back on the data, right? So we don't want to just look at videos. We want videos and analytics off those videos. Sure. Uh, so FPGAs accelerate that. So it's the back and forth and the connectivity between the processing both in the data centers at the edge. But there's many new innovations coming up in the marketplace. There's genomic sequencing. There's lots of changes going on in healthcare. We already talked about autonomous driving. What about drone delivery? And so we're going to need more smart drones to be able to deliver, you know, uh, packages or goods directly to your doorstep. So there's still a lot of innovation happening in various different markets. And electronics and the connectivity is helping to power those to make those real and real time to people so that it's no longer longer this, uh, it's being processed somewhere I can see. This is actually on my smartphone or my smartwatch or, hey, there's a drone uh, in my neighborhood and what is it doing? Oh, okay, it's, you know, taking a picture of, of the lawns to make sure that we're watering our lawns or, right. or not or conserving water appropriately. So there's a lot of innovation happening in these new markets and we believe the flexibility of the programmable logic is helping this innovation um, to create new products uh, and also to quickly get them to market so that people can try out these technologies. So these new markets aren't completely taking over, right? You guys are still serving more traditional markets as well. 
Oh, absolutely. We still have a very large market of FPGAs going into the traditional types of applications. So we've always sold a lot of programmable logic into uh, wireline, wireless uh, applications, so your traditional communications, networking, enterprise, but also all the others, industrial, automotive. We've been an automotive supplier into that market for many, many years, military and aerospace, all, you know, all the different compute nodes. So those are all the traditional FPGAs, but there's new markets that we're getting We talked a little bit about some of these new AI markets and analytics, and they need a lot more processing power, and they need it real time. And FPGAs has that combination of that high bandwidth and really fast response times or latency so that you can get responses very quickly because, you know, if you're in a, a factory and you've got a robot going on, you can't send the data to a cloud and wait five minutes for the answer to come back for the robot to proceed to its next step. So right. so you definitely need a lot of real-time processing to be able to do some things immediately. So machine vision, video analytics, those are things that are very, very real-time. Okay, so you touched on this a little bit, but for some more background, what kind of stuff do FPGAs really buy me as an engineer? Well, there's three kind of main, we'll call them virtues, that an FPGA, if you can really boil it down to there. We talked about acceleration a lot here. So FPGAs can provide many different kinds of performance boosts. So it could be a very simple one. So taking a 32-bit microcontroller and augmenting the processing there so it doesn't overtax that, you know, two, three dollar microcontroller from various vendors. Sure. But you know, they want to keep all the code investment, so they want to stay with that microcontroller. But they need a, you know some extra performance. So you can put a small little FPGA next to it and it can kind of boost its performance. So that's kind of one example. Another one would be a lot of chipsets or processors or various ASICs. At some point in time after they've been designed, you want to use them in other applications that maybe they weren't exactly designed for or a perfect fit for. And maybe you need a few extra IOs or things to be able to connect to a few other chips on the board. And you can stick those FPGAs right next to it to provide additional IO to talk between chips and, and do some additional processing. FPJ, it's in the name, flexible. So sure. it's the reprogrammable part of the, the technology that can adapt to not only changing standards that are con- continually happening in the marketplace, but adapting to innovation, yeah. your creativity, all the things that you want to take and do in these new markets, FPGAs can handle and take and adapt to your creativity. So those are kind of the three virtues that customers can really take advantage of. So, Tom, what's the tool story here? We've moved away from everyone needing to be a hardware-specific FPGA expert to use these things, right? If you can find a FPGA design engineer, he's a rare engineer in the marketplace. (laughs) So give that guy or gal a gold star. Yes. So yes, in the past, we spent a lot of time working on software that's very hardware centric. It's very semiconductor chip centric. So you almost were like an ASIC design engineer, although the technology you're targeting was an FPGA that's reprogrammable. But since then, we've needed to make it easier for customers and design engineers, but also there's a lot more engineers out there that do things that are not hardware centric. There's embedded designers that are designing microcontrollers and processors. There's people who don't even understand hardware. These are the algorithm designers working on AI or other things. Sure. And then you've got the software programmers that probably outnumber the hardware engineers 10 to 1. Yes. So those are the guys that they probably even couldn't spell FPGA (laughs) because they're working on C++ and Python and all the other languages. So we've needed to actually make it easy for them to design for us. A good analogy is at our house, we've made many different doors that you can walk through to get to the kitchen where the banquet of the FPGAs are are there for you to feast on because we think that there's a lot of different value even for software programmers. And we want them to take advantage of the acceleration capability and the ease of use even if they're a software programmer. So see, these are some of the new tool flows that we've come up with. And now that we're part of Intel, Intel's got a lot of expertise in this area. So we've combined our direction and strategy along with the rest of Intel and the Intel software teams and the rest of the ecosystem. 
Excellent. Okay, so Tom, if someone in my audience is ready to get started using FPGAs, what are the first steps they should do? Well, what I would recommend is do something really easy for you. So we put together something really simple. We want to show you examples of these three virtues, right? So boosting performance, some extra I.O., and adapting to change. So we've got some very simple, very short demonstrations we can show you so that you're like, oh, okay, now I know what you mean by expanding I.O. So you you can actually see some real world examples. And then we've added some additional applications that you don't have to start from a blank sheet of paper. You can actually download these applications, these reference design, try them out, and you can see different kinds of applications that can be run on the specific two boards that we're going to recommend. And then what we've given you step-by-step instructions, some videos, very simple language to be able to go and do it yourself, DIY. You can follow these simple steps and we guarantee that these demos will run. Everything's not going to break. So we've done a lot of usability uh, studies to make sure that everything is as easy as possible so you can walk step-by-step to get from A to Z with these boards. Okay, Tom, so in terms of dev kits, which everyone loves, what have you got for me? So what we have, Amelia, is uh, two specific development kits. Uh, They're available on Intel's Developer Zone. The first one is the DE10 Nano. This is a small board that has a Cyclone 5 FPGA, but it's a Cyclone 5 SOC variant. So embedded within the FPGA, we have a whole uh, ARM-based A9 uh, processing subsystem. So it's the A9, um, and it has a whole a peripheral set that's hardened in there. So not only do you get to play with the FPGA portion, but you also, if you're an embedded uh, designer or you're familiar with processors, you can maybe um, you know work on the processor side and then hook up the processor to the FPGA and do some experimenting there. So that would be something uh, really fun um, for people, uh, especially if you're an ARM developer, to start with. Uh, The other one would be one of our newest uh, product families that we've rolled out is the Intel Cyclone 10 FPGA. So we have a a very small evaluation kit. Um, This is a low cost, uh, low power. That's what the LP stands for, kind of low cost, low power. Uh, and this also has a, a, a nice, small, cost-effective FPGA. Uh, but in this one, you could take advantage if you wanted to do some embedded programming. We have our NEOS 2, which is a soft IP core uh, that uh, you can embed within the, the fabric of the FPGA. And then you can actually create your own custom peripherals to, to hook up to the NEOS 2. And you can take advantage of the, the reprogrammable FPGA logic to create your own peripherals and kind of make your own custom microcontroller. So that'd be something really good. And both of these are fully documented. You can buy these online. Uh, There's tutorials. All the applications and all the things, goodness, we talked about previously are available from the Intel Developer Zone. Okay, Tom. Well, I think it's time to wrap things up. Can you give me your main points? Sure. The Programmable Solutions Group, part of Intel, is helping to accelerate this new smart and connected world. We're helping to give engineers all the technologies that they need, whether it's in new areas or whether it's in traditional markets. We've also lowered the barriers to entry, so it's a lot easier for you that if you've never used FPGAs before, we've got new software, we've got these new DIY type kits for people to come up to speed so they can better understand and start working with FPGAs. And we believe that we want to do this because the benefits of FPGAs are in a lot of different areas and we want to continue to evolve and enable the innovation in a lot of these new areas. And then go through those steps with those couple of boards. And then you're ready to move beyond that. And you say, hey, I'm really convinced that was easier than I thought it was. And I really want to start using this. Then you can go talk to one of our partners, Mouser Electronics. And they've got our full range of devices. We have power regulator devices, software development tools, IP, dev kits to to go ahead and, and really get started on a project that you may take. And it would be very interesting to come back and see what kind of creativity and things they can do in the future, Amelia. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Tom. You're quite welcome. Thank you very much for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this subject from Intel. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.